let me start recording and then uh, our topic is uh, monitors uh, today so we are going to uh, see a couple of examples from monitors uh, let me just open the chat messages as well um, so uh, the last week we talked about semaphores and uh, now we are creating uh, something different uh, which is called uh, monitors uh, they're basically they are interchangeable uh, that means you can uh, implement semaphores using monitors or you can implement monitors using semaphores with a couple of extra uh library calls and so on uh, but uh, the basic motiva motivation behind the uh, monitors is that uh, needs to uh, have some uh, modular uh, approach to the uh, concurrency problem so that uh, you will have uh, object oriented uh, like not object oriented but object oriented like approach uh, in order to uh, have a better abstraction of what's going on in uh, the monitors so the uh, we have a couple of mod uh, things or a couple of advantages uh, we have uh, in uh, monitors so just let me just write a couple of things here so we have monitors. First of all, uh, it is a programming language concept, actually. So basically, you may accept, uh, expect to have the uh, programming language support the monitor. Uh, there is not much direct examples, but Java is an example. Uh, uh, in C, we have C and C++, we have libraries providing that. So we do a couple of extra things to uh, end up in monitors. Because the idea is, so we have an object, like a class actually, but we usually use monitor instead of class keyword, we use monitor. And this is hypothetical, assume you have a programming language with this. And then, all of the uh, methods here uh, are executed in um, uh, a critical region in a critical region or mutually exclusive way. That means if a method is active, another method cannot uh, start executing immediately, it blocks. So this is the idea. Uh, that means it is a protection that only one can enter and the second has to wait for its turn. So it's like a, for each monitor, there is a queue here. And when someone is inside the other's wait in the queue, uh, if this exits, the new one can enter. By me, by enter, I mean this uh, scope of the monitor. They can execute uh, not in parallel, not in concurrently, but uh, in a sequential way. And this is a nice mechanism because you don't have to write this uh, lock, unlock at each function. You all know that. Uh, this is not end of story. We have ifs, we have returns, we have conditions based on that we need to unlock lock many times inside of this region. But in this uh, bit monitors, you don't have to do that. But this comes with a, uh, another uh, question. So how threads communicate? So in a semaphore, example we have uh, this one semaphore is initially zero thread one tries to lock it 
and so this is zero and it waits and then thread two is going to unlock it or let us use the real terminology wait for it and this one signals it as a result this is going to continue so this is a communication uh, mechanism in semaphores but if you try to do that in a monitor, define a semaphore here, and in function f, you wait for signal, and in function g, for example, or in the same function, it doesn't matter, you signal sick what happens is this a good idea any idea are you there jim can you please clarify the question so i i, I need to uh, implement the same mechanism a semaphore is waiting then the other one is signaling so this is communication this is going to wait until the other one lets thread one go. And in semaphore, I can do that. I set a semaphore, uh, set semaphore to zero, then the other one signal it so that thread one can continue. I'm trying to do the same thing. A thread will block on F and another track thread will call G to unblock F. Um. I don't think it's a good idea because when when the wait is waiting, the signal and uh, the function that calls the signal cannot be executed, right? Because they're in the critical region. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. So uh, this one is blocking inside. So this one is blocking inside. So so the second one cannot enter. So when you are using monitors you should forget about semaphores are, and other uh, mechanisms. We need some mechanism which is aware of the thing here, the aware of a monitor being exclusive uh, region. And that mechanism is called what? Condition variable, exactly. Uh, so, a condition variable is a way of uh, blocking. So in a condition variable, if you wait for a condition variable, you can use this notation or put condition variable inside. It doesn't matter. It makes this one. So it will exit, monitor, block, and enter monitor and when uh, someone signals it so this blocking state will be one it will make this one uh, unblock so it is going to continue and it is in this next stage entering monitor so uh, in this way the other thread can enter okay so this is the uh reason to have something called condition variable the name is uh, slightly uh, confusing condition variable does not carry any information so it, it doesn't tell you about the condition itself for example uh producer consumer problem you wait for condition empty for example if uh, q is empty you are going to sleep for example or uh, you are going to sleep until Q is not empty. Condition variable or someone signaling it does not tell you about Q is empty or not. It only gives you that uh, someone uh, tell you that possibility, the condition changed. Okay. You need to store the condition somewhere else. So we usually put that those conditions in the monitor. 
the next thing in the summary is about this difference. MESA versus HOR monitors. HOR monitors and MESA monitors are two different approaches uh, and it is called semantics. Uh, in your library, you can implement any of them if you are uh, writing a, a monitor library or programming language. And the difference is what? Do you remember the difference? Different queues for different condition variables. Uh, the hard ones, the hard one have has different queues for different uh, processes that wait on specific condition variables. Uh, yes, actually, uh, the thing is, uh, there are different queues for different condition variables, both of them. But how you let uh, them out of those queues are different. So you, you can have multiple queues in both of them, but how you let them inside the monitor is the difference. Uh, the thing is, this uh, this one is signaling is let you. Uh, so I, actually, I need to. Draw this. Actually, you have a nice drawing in your slides, but uh, it will take some time for me to open the slides. I forgot to open that. Uh, so the thing here is we have a queue of entry and we have a queue of condition variables and some thread is waiting. And this thread sends a signal of this condition variable. That means one of the threads will go enter here. The main entry of the main gate of the monitor. So this is the mess assignment. In HOR, it is HOR is, uh, slightly uh, different. Each condition variable queue is directly attached to the uh, gates of the monitor. So uh, when this one, signals it will immediately let us have one and two it is going to immediately terminate and let cv1 enter okay so in our semantics we need to implement this one this one out this one in so it is some sort of atomic uh, exchange of the position. Uh, in Mesa semantics, after signaling, so this is A, this is B, this is B, A remains inside, okay? Uh, we have a problem here in MESA because there might be other people in front of B. Since uh, there might be other uh, threads in front of B, B needs to recheck the condition. If this logical condition like Q is empty, B needs to recheck. However, in hard semantics, if you sure that, uh, if you make sure that uh, Q is empty uh, when signaling. That means Q is empty, A is signaling, this terminates and this one enters. No one can enter uh, in between so that uh, B doesn't have to check, check this condition again. If A checked it already, B doesn't have to check. And this is the uh, basic difference. Uh, if you are the implementer side, uh, you shouldn't much worry about this because most of the implementations are MESA, like our uh, P-thread implementation. Why? Sizce bu neden olabilir? Siz olsanız hangisini implement etmeyi tercih ederdiniz? 
No, uh, there is not much about CPU uh, here. Yeah, the, why why do you prefer Mesa? Actually, there is a simple answer. It looks simpler. It looks simpler. Uh, in the uh, second case, the signaling requires picking up the first guy here, uh, mark it as inside of the monitor, uh, and give schedule to this thread. So this one, this transition A to B, and making sure B enters, requires some uh interaction with the scheduler also so this needs to be a little bit of scheduler aware library implementation okay or so uh, you should make sure that no one else could get that but b so you either uh, have extra flags here extra information here uh, to pick someone to enter monitor, the others cannot enter uh, because we have also other competitors here in the main gate. Okay, there are people in the main gate and the condition variables gates, so you need to control more doors here, and you make sure that not this one but this one enters, and it it requires uh, precise uh, uh, control of who can enter the monitor and so on. So this is uh, just an overview of what we had. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, HOR, HOR doesn't have to use the scheduler, but there are two options. Yeah, either you uh, cooperate with the scheduler, so pick next thread to wake up, uh, or uh, you make sure that by using extra information in context switch. So the others will not wake up or so when a terminates the others should not enter but b you need to implement that uh, in an extreme condition okay. so now let us go back to Hojam, uh, before going on yeah okay. i already said this in the previous lecture but uh, it was it seems also difficult to implement something like notify all using core semantics right yeah, so yeah, how you would do that is not very clear, but sometimes it can be really useful, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the thing is, um, uh, it might be impossible because you need to make all of them enter. So you are. Uh, it's not possible. Maybe switch between them one by one, but that's not very nice either. Oh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure when Hawaii would be useful. Like maybe some kind of urgent signaling mechanism, like. You know, it needs to happen. I mean, the condition is true. Something needs to happen right now. So you just switch the context to that thread. But I don't know what case could that be. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, probably in a real-time system, it is, uh, it's helpful uh, if there's some sort of priority, et cetera. So uh, based on priority, you uh, pick exact uh, threat. Uh, some condition is more important than the other. In MESA, there is no uh, priority among the conditions, but in uh, HAR, you can implement this priority. If exactly. Thanks. Uh, okay, now let me show you uh, my example. But before uh, going into uh, C examples, I would like to show you my C++ examples because I'm using uh, some programming language trick to make that possible so that our monitors will look uh, prettier uh, and easier to control. Uh, what I do is I define this monitor base class having a mutex. And uh, when creating the monitor, I call this mutex initializer. And the condition variables are defined inside as a nested class. You don't have to uh, understand all of the details, but just giving you idea of what's really going on. 
so I also uh, store the owner of this condition variable, which monitor, and the condition uh, p thread library it gives us since it is a C based library, it only gives us the conditional variable and mutex. Uh, we need to control everything. We need to lock the mutex, unlock the mutex, do the things on our own. Uh, and this is our uh, condition variable constructor setting the owner and initializing the condition variable. Uh, you need to do this in order to uh, put the condition variables and mutexes in their initial state. Uh, initializing the variables, especially uh, if you are using uh, local variables for condition variables and uh, mutexes, you need to initialize them because they may contain garbage values. Uh, so I have wait, notify, and notify all corresponding to uh, pthread library calls. Uh, this is the tricky point in uh, condition variable waiting. So when a condition variable waits in C, you need to also give the mutex. Why? Because of the uh, uh, definition I made. A condition variable wait includes actually three calls. Release the monitor, lock on the condition, enter the monitor. In order to do that, we need to specify this mutex. So the condition wait will release the mutex, lock on the condition, and then uh, enter the mutex again. And this is signaling, and uh, this is called broadcasting, notifying all. Uh, and in order to implement the trick I am using, I have this lock class with some owner. Uh, so when I, so this lock doesn't do anything actually, but in the constructor, it locks a mutex, the mutex of the owner, mutex of the monitor. And when I am unlocking it, uh, sorry, when I'm distracting it, it unlocks the mutex. I'm using this trick to uh, have this uh, C++ constructors uh, uh, allocated when you enter a scope and they, they allocate it when you uh, exit the scope. And I'm going to exploit this. I'm going to have this lock variable created. It is going to lock the mutex. And when I'm out of the function, it will be automatically distracted and I'm out of the context. I'm using that to implement the monitors. Uh, these uh, actually are not used, but these two are the important part. Then I have this trick. I define this macro, synchronized macro, which looks like Java counterpart. In Java, we have the synchronized keyword. And just simply creating a local mutex variable. And that's it. Okay. Uh, with this, this is the monitor in that case. So that only putting this in the uh, beginning of my uh, monitor functions will make sure that they are uh, exclusive. Okay. And this is how I proceed. When I'm defining a monitor, I am going to derive it from a monitor class, the base class. I create my condition variables like that. And for each method, I am going to use this one. It is going to create the local variable, lock the mutex. And when I'm terminating, I don't have to do anything. For any reason, like returning or uh, uh, at intermediate point, or, or even in the exceptions, it is going to destroy this variable and unlock the monitor. So this is my trick. Jim, I think this is a really nice trick. It's like the with in Python. It's like because I mean, using threads in C is very annoying because well, you lock something in the beginning. Then if you have multiple exit points. You need to unlock it at each of the exit points. You don't. You, you must not forget. You need to use All some sort of go to. Yeah, exactly. If there is an error, it's not going to be unlocked again. <laughs> so the distractor guarantees that it's going to be unlocked no matter what, which is nice. Exactly. I'm exploiting that actually. Uh, 
And uh, thanks to that, now we can have our simple synchronization pattern written in C++. So my barrier will be now uh, monitor. And this condition is all here. And this is my number of threads and current counts. And they are, I don't need to protect them because now it is a monitor. They are already protected. And in my code, there will be no lock unlock. So a barrier is created this way. Number of threads is set to N. And then I wait, putting the sequence. Uh, making all of the methods synchronized is not a good idea because sometimes you need this. Uh, some You may need, for example, an auxiliary function. And you may like to call this auxiliary function here. And if you do so, and this, if this is also synchronized, it will be a deadlock. Uh, are we allowed to use this code? You know, yes, uh, this monitor.h, uh, you can use it. Okay. This is not a good idea because it says double lock and it will end up in deadlock. So this is not a good idea. That's why I'm. Uh, uh, you need to distinguish synchronized and non, not synchronized functions. So aux is not synchronized, so I can use it. Uh, and then uh, this is with broadcast, and this is a single case. When someone is waiting for the barrier, I increment counters. If count is number of threads, I notify the condition variable in this case. In the semaphore version, if you remember, I was just uh, signaling the semaphore. In this one, I'm not signaling, I'm notifying. So we are using this terminology because all here is the condition variable. Otherwise, we need to wait, all here wait, and everyone waking up notifies the other. Another important thing about uh, the condition variables or the uh, difference between the condition variables and semaphores is, uh, in semaphores, you don't lose any signal. In a semaphore, So you each uh, signal will increment this value. Signal again, it will be two. Signal again, it will be three, and so on. If someone is blocking all, uh, on signal zero, as soon as it gets one, it gets zero back. So depending on the number of waiters, it will increment and decrement. But signaling, for example, by mistake, if you single that, so there were five uh, waiters and you signaled 10 times. This is an ugly 10, okay? 10 times. So it will wait, it will be five. But in the condition variables, if there are five waiters for the condition, you signal 10 times, the next one will wait. So this is semaphore. In condition variable, in this case, next white waiter will wait. Because the condition is something like Boolean. It disappears. OK, condition holds. As soon as condition is signaled, if there is a waiter, it is waking up. Otherwise, it is lost. Probably I need to write that down. Let me just so condition signal means if a waiter wake up as Nothing. So nothing is preserved. It just disappears. And this is important. Uh, 
so this is the uh, barrier example, and it is very similar to our uh, semaphore example. Let me just skip the producer condition. Uh, C plus, uh, why we need synchronized again. Uh, C++ doesn't support support monitors, and in the methods, I need to protect my variables, this count and maximum. So I need some uh, mutex, and at each point I enter uh, a method, I need to lock the mutex, and I need to unlock uh, the mutex when I'm terminating. However, this is not uh, easy. For example, I can show you this C version of the same thing. Barrier C. As you can see, I have mutex unlock, mutex lock, mutex unlock in all of the functions. Instead of that, by using this uh, macro, it is automatic. In the constructor of the uh, variable, it is locked, and in the destructor, it is unlocked. And this is the implementation. So this is synchronized, creating the mutex variable, constructor call, and destructor call. This is our producer consumer problem. We have not full and not empty. And then uh, this is my simple think list implementation. Uh, and this is Boolean empty and full checkers. And this is for displaying the uh, queue. And this is producer consumer initializers. And enqueuing means as a monitor uh, method, wait until if the queue is full, capacity is full, I cannot produce a new item, I cannot enqueue a new item. So I'm going to wait on this condition variable and the dequeuer is going to notify me and vice versa while queue is empty, the dequeuer or the consumer is going to wait until it is not empty and so on. A one important thing coming up with this mesa semantic is having this loop, the while loop. Okay. You need while loop because what because of the competition. Someone which is not waiting on the condition variable, even uh, if you think uh, the condition variables are sorted and there is no problem over there. Actually, there is no problem because everyone blocking the condition variable is going to be waking up one by one. There is no problem, but it is a competitive environment. As I said before, and Mesa semantics, this thread is going to go from here to another queue. And someone else might be in front of it. And this one can see, okay, it is available, so it can produce an item. So queue is not full anymore. So queue is not empty anymore, okay? Uh, not, not in all of the cases, but in this very specific case, our semantics doesn't need that only if it will be sufficient because uh, in the signal, I make that check. Okay. I uh, erase one item from the queue and as soon as I notify, I will be out and this one can enter. But since it is message semantics, some other threads might be in front of us inserting an item or removing an item, so we have to do that. We have to remove that. 
you can try this at home. You can have uh, this code is working single producer, single consumer. If you have multiple producers, uh, multiple consumers, in this version, using if you are going to observe uh, incorrect results, like trying to pop an item from an empty queue and so on. Okay. Uh, if you use if, please try that at home on your own. And this is my rest of the examples, pretty much the same. So multiple producers and consumers are inserting item, reviewing the item. And as soon as someone is uh, inserting, uh, consumers are slow, I believe. Uh, producers are uh, filling up until 20 and the consumers are just cleaning them up. Okay. So this is the producer consumer with uh, condition variables. Let us implement reader writer as well. So in the reader writer, we have two conditions: can write and can read. Uh, this example is from the slide, so I'm not uh, going in details of uh, how it works, but how it is coded. So I keep reader count and writer count, and in order to start reading. I need to make sure that there is no writer inside. Okay, so a reader has to make sure that there is no writer. As long as there is no writer, I can simply go in by incrementing the reader counter. Uh, and this is actually, sorry about that. I have a, a notify all uh, example. There are two examples in the code. This is the slide's uh, original implementation. Uh, while uh, there is a writer and there is a writer waiting, so this implementation also likes to be fair. This is the difference between the other implementation and this one. Uh, the other one didn't care uh, if uh, there is a writer waiting. If there is no writer inside, just jumps in. This one also makes sure that there is no writer waiting. It marks itself as waiting and wait for the condition. And then makes itself not waiting anymore and incrementing the counter and uh, letting other readers also enter. If there are other readers waiting for this condition, can read wait. The first one entering lest the others enter. So this gives you another example of instead of while, can I use if? Yes, with this condition. The next one is notifying the others. Okay, The first one enters, notifies the others so that the others can enter too. Uh, and this is the finishing reader, decrement that, and can write notify. And write is just the symmetry of this one. Uh, if there is no writer or reader, it can uh, it can directly enter. Otherwise, it has to keep itself marked as wait and wait on this condition and so on. And finishing write means if there is a reader, it notifies reader. Otherwise, uh, writer. So it is like uh, switching between reader writers. Writers pass readers and readers uh, pass uh, writers. Okay. Uh, so it tries to be uh, fair. So this is my monitor object and I call this method. So if you look into this source code, you will realize that uh, the codes with condition variables are uh, if uh, coded correctly, uh, looks better and easy to read. Okay. So in the alternative implementation, it is shorter, but we have a problem. It is not fair. So the readers can enter, 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 and make read count plus plus in most of the time. So writer uh, may not have any chance to enter. 
The other one, uh, prioritize writers if there is a writer, okay? And while reader count and writer counts are greater than zero, the writer's weight. And also uh, for readers, I need to use notify all, which means uh, I notify all of the readers so that all of them can enter uh, directly. If you do not do this, you need to have put an extra notify here. Uh, something about notify all. Notify all uh, sometimes look a easy solution for some of the problems, but uh, it is not efficient because uh, if there is a competition, in this example, there is no competition. If there are 1,000 readers, they can enter together. So no problem. But if there is a competition, so first one is going to enter, you do this. You wake up all of the readers in this loop, okay? Thousand readers in this loop. They all wake up and thousands of them check again if there is a writer, oh, there is a writer, and they sleep again. And it is not efficient. It is not a big deal, uh, but it is some resource for efficiency. If you uh, need to only wake up one uh, item, using notify is a better alternative. If only one of them can enter some uh, area region in this, uh, for example, multiple writers, only one writer can enter. No, uh, so you shouldn't use notify all. Okay. Hojam, I think this is an interesting example because uh, we have two condition variables. Uh -huh. but they actually both uh, lock on the same mutex. Yes. So it shows that, uh, you, well, when waiting, for example, with p threads, I mean, you need to pass the mutex associated with the condition to the condition variable, but it doesn't mean that uh, the mutex is in the, con you need to have one mutex for each condition variable. I mean, not necessarily, yeah? it depends on the problem. Uh, because here there is one mutex and two condition variables. Uh, actually, in uh, the context of monitors, you had better use only one mutex because uh, the uh, monitor semantics says that if uh, two functions are methods of the same object, uh, they should be, should be mutually exclusive. So you should use uh, one mutex and it's, it's uh, uh, depending on how much parallelism you need, it is uh, a better idea if you don't need parallelism, better idea to use a single mutex for all of the conditions. Yes, it depends on the shared variables, I guess, on the underlying shared variables that you're updating. Yeah, uh, yeah. If they are completely independent, of course, different yeah. mutexes, but if they are shared, well. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's something not obvious uh, in the not monitor case, in the C case, let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, some Maybe you need two monitors instead of one. Uh, you, you may think about that depending on the problem. Uh, okay, uh, so... Uh, Oh, sorry about that. I didn't. Uh, so the uh, in the examples also I have this barbershop implementation. Uh, feel free to go over there and try that. So, for example, you can have number of barbers five. There are six seats and time for a new customer in once in one second new customer comes and it takes three seconds to cut air so it is a simulation barbershop uh, barbershop simulation using monitors uh, so now let us have our uh, our quiz in the last minutes. Oh, sorry, I had wrong quiz. Just show problems with my own. Okay. Uh, 
Evet, evet. Ben de böyle bir eğitmeye özledim. Çok haklısın.